very fast part of the course, a little bit rough through this right-hand kink, and then it's very, very hard on the brakes. And to this left-hand turn, which drops away with an off-camber, back onto the speed bowl. John Harvey behind Seaton, and now falling into the clutches of Francovic. Here's Johnson, defending from Jim Richards. And just behind them, we've got Charlie O'Brien in car number seven. So this is a very good three-way battle. Yeah, quite a few battles going on in this race. As down the uh, main straight, uh, Robbie Francovic gets by, or is about to get by, Johnny Harvey. There's Seaton going through. And here comes Francovic. He'll have Harvey to be trying quick. to hold him out. Harvey will do his best, but Francovic is quicker. So Francovic now goes through on the inside and will advance to a fourth in the race. Harvey is fifth in car number three. Peter Brock, though, still leading in car number zero five. And back behind, uh, John Harvey about to fall into the clutches of uh, Dick Johnson, Jim Richards, and Charlie O'Brien and the Bubba to Bumper BMW. And plenty of action so far in the race, and uh, it's been provided by the V8s who've really put the muscle on the turbos here today. Brock, Crosby leading Seaton, then Robbie Francovic here in the Turbo Volvo, the man who won the first two rounds of the championships at Amaru and at Simmons Plains. The man who was out-qualified by teammate John Bauer in the second of the dealer team Volvos. John Harvey in car number three going into the pit, so Harvey has got problems, heads into the pit area. That puts him totally out of calculations and allows O'Brien and Brad Jones and Tony Longhurst to go by. So, positions in the Motocraft 100, 05, Brocky leads from Crosby and Glenn Seaton third in the Skyline. Glade International Raceway, round four, the Motocraft 100. And this is the scrap of the race so far, Graham Crosby in car number two, running in second behind Peter Brock. And not too far off his bumper is Glenn Seaton in the second of the Nissan Skylines and then Robbie Francovic in the Turbo Volvo. Yeah, slower car just slotted in there. It's Graham Hooley uh, for the moment, but uh, Seaton has been getting gradually closer to Crosby. They come along the long front straight towards the right-hander, and here is Seaton in car number 15. Behind this bunch, we've got Richards from Charlie O'Brien, Dick Johnson, oops. Tony oops, oops, and Look at oops. Crosby in terrible trouble out in the dirt. How did he get stuck out there? He's been very wide down there all day, hasn't he? Exactly. Just It's all it took just to get uh, out in those uh, loose marbles. That was just probably the only uh, incorrect step that he's taken all day. Put Seaton into second place. And Seaton now goes out after Peter Brock, but at this stage... There's about uh, half the distance of the oval, so you're probably looking at about a kilometre difference at this stage. Heading down to the bottom corner, Dick Johnson, of course, in the field. Still, uh, well, he knows he's not competitive at this stage with the Commodore V8s and uh, the Nissan and Volvo. But Dick Johnson is the white hope for Ford. Oh, uh, well, mate. I think it's a waiting game, this race, Mike, to be quite honest. It's exactly how we were analysing it up here. Uh, how are the tyres hanging out at this stage? Well, they're not bad at the moment, but they're pulling away from me a little bit because I'm just trying to look after them because I know just how much it can mean towards the end of the race to have good tyres. But the old Volvo, she certainly looks as though she put the truck suspension in for the weekend, <laughs> but he's still trucking on, one of them. But uh, I tell you what... I think there's more cars falling out than, uh, than Marcos' wife has got shoes. <laughs> Dick, you're know, having quite a dice there with Jim Richards and uh, Charlie O'Brien. You seem to be with them through the S's and the tighter parts of the circuit, but down the straight, they got the edge on you. Mate, you wouldn't believe it, would you? <laughs> it's incredible. Anyway, yeah, I tell you what, it's, the car still feels good, though. I don't really... I know Charlie's working his rear tyre pretty hard. I'm, I'm just having a bit of a look at him. Off the bowl, he gets the thing he's a bit sideways and, you know, and he uh, puts too much temperature in the rear tyre. I tell you what, that really makes it uh, difficult to drive the car later. Well, you're in seventh position on the racetrack, Dick. Uh, you figure that uh, you're going to let the others uh, wear themselves out and you'll just keep moving up. Well, we'll just keep on trucking on the way we are. And you never know where we might end up. By the because, way, Dick... I tell you what, I think there's a few guys might have a pit stop even. Dick. Yep. Happy birthday to you. Oh, Happy mate. birthday to you. Go away. Hey, 51, is that right? Oh, I tell you. <laughs> I, tell you I tell you what, I feel like John Harvey's tire, mate. I tell 
I think it's got a flat spot bigger than the festival all dance floor. <laughs> you can't keep any secrets here, Dick. Yeah, thanks, pal. OK, Dickie Johnson, we'll come back to you later. Happy, oh, no, happy you. 41st to you. Yeah, 69. Yeah, I know, that's another story. OK, we pick up along uh, the straight, and here, of course, is our two-litre category. Car number 11 and is, of course, uh, Drew Price. The two Toyota team drivers actually switching cars after yesterday's practice session, and John Smith has decided to go out in the earlier model Sprinter. And Drew will be running the front-wheel drive car today. Here, car 11, and he's just in behind Bob Holden. Two litre championship this weekend having been combined with the outright contenders. This is the car that we saw run very well and very strong at Sandown a couple of weeks ago. And Drew Price, got a lot of experience in karting, has come to terms with the car very well indeed. In amongst the dice at the moment for the second, third and fourth in the outright class. So this gives you some indication of how quick these cars are. Seaton coming up onto the back here of Price, trying to thread his way through. And behind him, we've got Graham Crosby and Robbie Francovic really engaged in a great battle for third and fourth. So it's Holden, Seaton, then Price. So we've got two races within a race here. And this is where it gets very difficult for some drivers to try and maintain their own profile in a race, look after their own, and at the same time stay out of the way of other people's, people's dices. There's Robbie Francovic down on the inside. Oh, negotiated that uh, quite safely. Holden and uh, Price know the rules of the road as uh, well as the rest of them, and uh, we open class cars quite easily through that. And by gee, Robbie Francovic working hard, but uh, slowly but surely reeling in the couple of cars up ahead of him. Crosby now right on his tail. Graham Crosby, who had a moment and went wide on the exit of the, uh, the turn at the end of the, the long straight here. Well, that straight's coming up again. So uh, within the next uh, 25 seconds, we'll see whether or not uh, Francovic can apply enough pressure for him to make him do it again. Tell you what I noticed that time, Wilco, the Crosby Commodore coming onto the main straight really crossed up and sideways, so the rear tyres will be heating up all the time, yet the Volvo came on very cleanly. And although it appears as though the Commodores have got the legs this weekend, it'll be the way that you use up your tyres and your brakes at this circuit at the end of 60 months that'll make all the difference. Francovic with two wins and a second placing so far in the championship, well clear up into the 80s in terms of points. And Crosby, of course, has had a fairly strange sort of a run. He didn't finish the first round at Amaru Park, but then a fourth down at Simmons Plains, and that great dice with Dick Johnson, and then 11th at Sandown after he got tangled up in the Sistine Commodore in the blue at the first turn. He's very close now, coming on to the bowl. 